What's up legends? Welcome back to another video. We are still in Geneva, Switzerland and I have come to DM Performance Switzerland. Swiss, I'm going to put the Instagram underneath so that you guys can go check it out and they are very kindly lending me a beautiful Karma Red Porsche GT3. There's a bit of wind out here but before we go inside I want to show you two cars which are out here. We've got another 991.2 GT3 this time in blue but same generation PDK like the one that we'll be driving later but a very very cool Tecart turbo convertible this is awesome looking I actually saw this at the uh, talk rally in Monaco but it's so sick I mean look at all of the various forged carbon fiber parts so you got forged carbon fiber diffuser quad exhaust tips huge forged carbon fiber wing massive air intake right there the tech art forged rims which are a lot lighter the extended wheel arches the forged carbon here yeah, the whole car has been redone and the gt3 rs inspired uh, little winglets on the side right there very very cool so you'll tell that there is a bit of a porsche theme going on here so if we come around here we now have the GT3 that we'll be filming, but I'm going to take it for a little bit of a drive So we'll talk about this in more detail later, but I also wanted to just show you First of all the RS6 right there. It's just had um, a couple of little things done to it So they were just testing it out uh, to see if the power figures all lined up really nice the, This generation still looks great hasn't really uh, taken too much of a hit and doesn't look too outdated 458 Italia this has the sport bucket seats the all wanted sports bucket seats so they sell much better these if they've got the sport buckets nice little detail is the Italian flag on the front hood and this caught my eye now it's been stashed here for a little while it's having loads of work done uh, on the engine more power coming up it's over I think eight or nine hundred horsepower this one but it is a turbo s very similar to mine just convertible with nice touches like uh, silver brake calipers usually those are yellow the carbon ceramics on the Turbo S's, these have been painted over in silver. We've also got a 997 first generation GT3 RS. So these are, well you don't see them that often because they're basically in collections now because they're going up in value so much. But it looks really cool. You've got the non-leather interiors on these, the old school interiors. And look how much smaller it kind of looks. I don't know if you can really tell on camera. It actually looks bigger on camera, but anyways, really cool looking car. We're going to have a proper go in this Karma Red GT3, but I think it's best we go away from the garage, and then I'll show you the whole spec once you find somewhere where we can stop along the road with a bit more sun. We find ourselves now in the countryside, and this is where this car belongs. I hope there's not going to be too much wind, but look at this car. Isn't this so cool? It is not your traditional red on this. It is Karma Red. So it looks really good. It's very flat red. So it means that it changes quite a bit. So see how dark it gets here, kind of blood red when it's in uh, the shade. And then as soon as it's in the sun, it becomes a really vibrant red. It's a really nice color. Now, uh, these guys, DM Performance Suisse, they uh, are specialized in modifying cars for the track. So this one has been tickled with a little bit. Um, so it's got, for example, brand new race bread brakes. It is on some pretty serious tires as well, some Trofeo R's. Um, these are some serious, serious track tires. The exhaust has been meddled with a little bit and the geometry of the car. So the angle that the tires are sat at basically has been dealt with a little bit. We're back with Jordan as well, who lent me his AMG GTR. Um, he is back with me for this test right here. Now these are super cool, the um, second gen 991.2s. It's kind of a sweet spot I think because it was before all of the new regulations came in and filters and you still had that four liter engine. So the gen one had the 3.8 liter, this is running the four liter. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it more when we're driving. But this was one of the cars, obviously, I was thinking about uh, the most when I bought my Turbo S. And it's gonna be interesting to see when driving this, if I regret my decision of going for the comfortable daily route rather than the slightly more hardcore GT product. And I've been having an itch for these since driving the 718 Spider as well and being in a GT3 RS not too long ago. Anyways, all that to say, I'm really excited to drive it basically. So as we always do, I'll show you around the spec of this specific car first and then we'll go for a drive and review, well review, I'll give you my little piece of uh, what I think about the car and how it feels from a short drive and my initial first impressions. Anyways, spec on this one, interior spec. So we've got a mix of carbon uh, leather and Alcantara. 
a lot of stitching as well. Contrast red stitching to go with the exterior, which is really nice. Um, looks pretty awesome. It's got nice little details like the carbon illuminated side sills right here, but you don't often get this on GT3s. Now, one of the easiest ways to tell a 991.2 apart from a 991.1 is through, on the interior at least, through this little double stripe on the Alcantara section of the sport bucket seats. That was introduced with this, this, uh, this car. Now the rest of the interior is basically the same as the first generation 991, slightly different steering wheel and that's about it. This one has the very important lift system as well. It's got the race harnesses which are attached to the club sport package. Little bit of scaffolding basically that you find in the back of the car right here. So you can see that once you've got this roll cage in the back of the car, it looks really cool and great if you're on track. The only slight downside to it is because there are no back seats in GT3s, this can actually be a really convenient, practical storage area. It basically means you have a massive boot, but it does give you so much more structural rigidity having the roll cage, and I think it looks so cool. And it means that you can attach these race harnesses, which again, are in red and really nice. 918 seats, Porsche embossed logo right here. And these seats are awesome because they are completely carbon backed, which I don't know if you can see over there. Anyways, yeah, Alcantara steering wheel as well is a nice little touch and uh, the fire extinguisher. Really cool spec, really cool car. And I'm just so pumped, so, so pumped to drive this. I've been waiting to drive a GT3 for ages. So let's hop on in, let's go for a drive. compared to the first they brought the manual back but this one with PDK if you're gonna do a lot of track like the owner of this car does it does make a lot of sense uh, to have the panels I actually quite like changing with the shifter down here that feels really satisfying but anyways we're starting in a little bit of traffic and then we'll get to some roads which are a bit more uh, fun and we'll be able to open it up a bit more and trust me the noise of this thing is insane but mainly when you hop in it's incredible I mean, it's not incredible, it's basically the same car as a turbo, just with modifications all over the place. But the platform itself is the same. But how familiar and how usable it feels. So the GT3, obviously not as hardcore as the RS, but still, you're in these carbon bucket seats. You're a lot lower down in the car, but you've still got all those 911 attributes, which are so nice and make it kind of so easy to just hop into and drive. So you've got the great visibility, um, you got the really predictable steering and you've just got the overall placement of the 911 so you're right in the middle of it um, it's not you know that long round front not that long round back it's just all balanced and kind of perfected obviously they've been making the 911 platform for 50 years so it's been perfected so much over the time that now I mean it's pretty hard to come up with any criticism of one of these but you do get a few telltale signs when you're cruising around like this. For example, when you leave it in auto, the GT2 will hold the gears a little bit longer than it would in a turbo. The brake pedal in this one, which probably isn't the best thing to review because they are aftermarket brakes, is a lot harder um, and has a lot more kind of race feel and character to it than um, in the turbo that I'm used to where the brake pedal is a little bit more mushy, a little bit more usable for everyday use. The steering in this one, again, feels a lot more race inspired, so it's a lot more direct, it's a bit less lazy than in the turbo. You can also feel um, instantly that you're lugging a bit less weight around. I mean, the noise also is one of the first things you notice, so it's that classic Porsche noise. You're no longer dealing with turbos, so you don't get the turbo wish and wash sound that you get in the in the turbo or turbo s's it's um yeah that naturally aspirated classic porsche noise that we know and love and i think that's 
what kind of makes the 991.2 so special. You've still got all the technology of these latest 911s, but it's perfected compared to the 991.1 where they had a lot of problems with the 3.8 liter. They kind of got rid of a lot of those with this. Yet you don't have all of these new filters and everything which you get on the more modern cars. So it's still got that rawness. And I think these, yeah, these will hold their value well than we've seen in the recent months that they're doing really well since the 992 has been performing insane on the aftermarket um, market. <laughs> On the aftermarket market that feels weird to say but that's that's what you say right these have been going up as a consequence of that now we're gonna open it up a little bit listen to this <laughs> 500 horsepower four liter naturally aspirated porsche engine do you hear those shifts it sounds like a cup cup oh my god This is where instantly that booting around town doesn't make sense. How is the car so easy to drive and then as soon as you step on it, so alive and so full of character. It's unbelievable and you rev all the way up to 9,000. Listen to this. What a noise. I mean, your brain's telling you to shift at like 6,000, but you just need to keep going, keep your foot in it. All right, we've got a little tunnel. You ready? Oh, it's one of the most beautiful and most recognizable sounds. What a machine, what an engine. I mean, this is such, such a cool engine. And you need to drive it to really understand it. So when you see these, you know, you, you don't often see them being opened up properly but when you're on it it just all makes sense everything is just perfected to a T so the gear shift is pretty perfect it's a bit more aggressive than in the turbo unsurprisingly it's definitely much more kind of GT race motorsport inspired you can feel that it's a bit more brutal it's holding its gears longer it's shifting a little bit faster but what's cool is the interior itself, you know, you still got the aircon, you still got the radio, you still got all of the kind of luxuries that Porsche get. It's not so hardcore like in a hardcore Lotus or something like that where you're basically left with nothing. <laughs> Even when you're not driving fast, you just rev it out. Oh my God. I'm gonna be a little bit cheeky, go back down to first. It's just so satisfying, listen. So cool. Do I regret my turbo? No, because for me, I mean, the turbo is such a good car and it does, it's built to do something different. So it's not really even fair uh, or probably a good idea to uh, compare the two because the turbo is the best car at what it needs to do, which is basically wafting around um, but being able to do it in the most comfort and as fast as possible while still being in a capable sports car uh, Whereas this is a track car which is made to be on the road and it is Basically the best at doing that as well now It really makes me want to drive a 992 GT3 and it's made me think okay I'm happy with the turbo s for what I use the turbo s for but oh my god are these GT products incredible There's just nothing else like it and I completely understand why these are so popular because and you kind of everyone always is raving about it and all the reviews and magazines and everything that you're like oh it kind of almost gets boring hearing how good these things are but when you get into it you're just like I mean I have nothing bad to say literally nothing it's one of those cars that just makes you want to drive 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 and drive and then when you're in town like this it's not, you know, abundantly loud. It's not too, look at me. I mean, the red color obviously is pretty eye-catchy, but you know what I mean? It's not over the top. It's so much easier to drive than it's like an Aventador SV or something like that, where you hop into them and you know, it's just so intimidating. There's no way you drive, want to drive one of those around town. But when you're pooling around like this, these things are great. Anyways, we're in a bit of traffic. I'll, I'll report back in a second when we're out of this traffic. 
Ready? Silly, silly amounts of fun. You know, you've got the right amount of grip to have fun. You've got the right amount of power. So my conclusion is I am more impressed having driven this car on the road than on the track almost. Because when you drive on track, it's so sick because of being on track and you don't know how much of the excitement and uh, all of that comes from the car itself or just the fact that you're on track. But after driving it on the road, what a car. What a car. So, so cool. So massive thank you to DM Performance Suisse for lending me the car. And I want to see in the comments down below, are you more of a Turbo S or a GT3 kind of person? Did I buy the wrong Porsche? Let me know in the comments down below and uh, maybe this will need to be the next step. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a little thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It does really help the channel and I'll see you very soon. Cheers guys. Bye bye.